everybody, today is March 8th, 2016, and it is about nine hours after my surgery. So basically what happened today was woke up at 6.30 and then left at like 6.45, got there at 7.15. At about 7.30, they took me in. And so what you have to do is they asked me, you need to give a urine sample and then you need to get in this gown and they give you socks and they give you like a hairnet. And so you're basically sitting there for a good amount of time and they're asking you these questions and they're writing paperwork half the time and then you know you get to get like a guardian or someone who comes in with you to you know talk with them and they get to sign papers and stuff and so what happens is they also give you an IV at about an hour to an hour and a half before the surgery and so it's just putting saline in you so you're I guess hydrated I'm not sure what it was for but then after that you're basically just sitting around for most of the time and one patient before me so I was waiting most of the time so after that they take your guardian or your parent or whoever you have with you out and they have to go wait so before any of that happened the surgeon slash doctor I've been seeing came and talked to us briefly and basically retold us what, what was gonna happen. Um, I actually only got two anchors put in my shoulder instead of three, so hopefully that'll speed up the recovery process. But it was getting really close to, you know, tearing like all the way around. It went from 12 to three and it was kind of tearing from six to 10 and I don't know why, maybe he put an anchor there, but I'm not sure, but I'm, he repaired it and it's a good thing I got it done now so before after him um, we got to talk to the physician assistant and we got to talk to one of the nurses who was helping out we also got to talk to the anesthesiologist who basically clarified that I was getting general anesthesia but in my last video I said that I wasn't getting a tube down my throat apparently I was and the doctor you know mixed something up or something cuz uh, my throat really hurts right now and it's a pretty big tube that's put down your throat. Um, I'm kind of sucking on like throat lozenges right now just to, you know, get rid of the pain and stuff. And then once your parents or, or whoever's with you leaves, they start cleaning the area and they start putting the nerve block in. And at the same time, you're getting anesthesia put in you. When I was in the anesthesia, I was kind of like giggling because as soon as they started putting like the shots into the IV, everything started to get a little dizzy. So I started laughing because I thought it was funny. And they, you know, put this in. And then as soon as they started moving the cart to the surgery room, I immediately like blacked out. And then I woke up. I also just want to say that I was, I had the anesthesia in me while I was getting the nerve block in. I was getting the nerve block as I was having anesthesia. So at the same time, was it gonna hurt or anything and they were just numbing it and it wasn't supposed to be painful at all and also a way that they find out if the nerve block is working or where they need to put the nerve block in is they kind of do some like reflex tests where they kind of see if your arm bounces a certain way and that also made me you know giggle as I was really under the anesthesia and then as soon as they roll out the cart I immediately like blacked out like that's where I don't remember anything and so they, I do remember that they said 940, so I'm assuming that's when the surgery started. And it ended at 1037, about 1040, so the procedure took about an hour. And I woke up about an hour later, 1130, and I was really, really tired afterwards. I wasn't like loopy or crying, I was just, you know, really tired afterwards. They bring your parents or whoever's with you, and you're so disorientated that you don't even realize that the surgery already happened. I was sitting in the gurney and I'm like really confused. I'm like, why are you here? You were just here a second ago. Like the surgery didn't happen yet. You need to leave. And and the one of the nurses is like, no, no, it already happened. <laughs> so you're really like disorientated after the surgery. And um, the nurse offers you, you know, well, my nurse offered me really warm blankets and she also offered you know some water and you know some cookies or crackers just to get something in you if you're feeling up to it usually after surgery you're not very hungry because of the anesthesia but I was eating pretty well so that wasn't a big problem for me another thing is you may feel really really like dizzy and drowsy and like you're on a boat basically and you can't really walk 
So what happened to me was I had to get wheelchaired out, but it was such a small distance, it wasn't that big of a deal. So anyway, they put you in the sling afterwards, and they say to ice it 20 minutes and take it off 20 minutes and re-ice it and, re and don't re-ice it. And they also give you, well they gave me, they gave me this breathing thing that you have to take every hour and basically you have to breathe in at a certain set that they give you. Mine is 400. Uh, I'm not sure why, it's just there. And it's basically a light ball that's on the inside and you're supposed to breathe in really slowly because they need to make sure that you're getting oxygen to your blood and you may not be able to like do that as well after surgery a because of anesthesia and b because you're probably not feeling well and plus it's because of percocets which is a painkiller i'm taking and it usually lessens your breathing so basically what you have to do is you have to put your mouth around this and you have to breathe in 10 times every time in an hour so i'm going to show you like once um so you have to be sitting up kind of and my eyes fell off but oh well so you should be sitting up and you need to take like slow breaths in. So. And then you're supposed to balance it on the inside. And you can't really breathe out in it. Like it won't let you put air in, but you can take air out. And that's how that thing works. So basically my review of today was I was kind of really tired throughout the day and kind of lazy so you kind of want someone like by your side like getting you stuff going to the bathroom wasn't a big problem like i thought it would have been especially using my other hand you do need someone to like wash your hand though i've been getting my mom to like wash my hand after i go to the bathroom because you can't really do it on your own and also really annoying is you have like a dead arm and i knew that was going to be annoying so the the nerve block is kind of wearing off right now so i can kind of move my fingers but like if you look at this finger I can I'm trying to lift it right now and instead it straightens and I can't really do it and you also like are like trying to like move your fingers because that's probably like the least like extremity that's going to be used by the nerve block and you might feel like you're clenching your fist but you look down and your hand <laughs> is wide open so I mean that's not really how it works but I mean it's wearing off that I can kind of do this but that's about it as soon as you start seeing that the nerve block is wearing off like right now because this this has been dead all day and now all of a sudden I can like scratch my stomach you should take your painkiller as soon as you start seeing like symptoms of it because I was told to take it every four to six hours and you want to take it like so the medicine overlaps so you have no like open space of being able to hurt because as soon as this wears off it's gonna like you're gonna be like really really like hurt like it's gonna hurt a lot so at about a half an hour ago which was 7 30 p.m i had my first set of painkillers from the percocet and the symptoms are supposed to be like dizziness or drowsiness you might have euphoria you might have dysphoria or something you might be like constipated or you might be all this other stuff or be nauseous and so anyways i'm not really feeling any effects right now so i'm not sure if symptoms come with the effects of not feeling any pain so I'm not sure about that but you do need to take it every four to six hours like I said before but you should probably take it earlier than later so you don't have that gap in between so I'm kind of feeling stuff in my shoulder at the moment the nerve block I used to have it in my neck and you can't really I can't really feel it I can feel it but it's like not as strong there so I can definitely tell the nerve block is wearing off so you just want to make sure that you take it earlier than later and you also need to take it with food not eat it with food but have the pills and then maybe have some crackers or something because it's not good on an empty stomach or you know eat crackers before and have it so you need to make sure that you don't have an empty stomach also some updates on like what I can take off how I can take it off the dressing I'm allowed to take off by Friday and take kind of like the bandages off and by that time you can take a shower by this Friday March 11th and you shouldn't scrub it but you can you know let the water run on it and stuff so it's mainly just for everything else and next Friday I'm gonna have my post-op with my doctor which is gonna be March 18th which is about 10 days after and by that time when I see him I can take this off and I don't have to wear it to sleep 
or anything. So basically when I see my doctor, I can take the sling off and basically have it hang to my side. Now, if you prefer to use it when you sleep or prefer to keep it on after the first week or 10 days or so, that's okay. It's not like you have to take it off, but it's like, but you don't want to keep it on for like more than like four weeks or six weeks because it keeps it stiff and you only want a small amount of stiffness and you don't want to keep it too stiff. I also talked to my doctor recently and my prediction or what he told me last time that I talked to him, he even clarified it like two to three times that I can play my stand-up bass at four weeks. He just recently decided to change his mind and say at two months, which is eight weeks, I can't play my bass. Now, I have a spring trip for my high school where we're going to Virginia Beach and I thought that I would be able to continue to practice and play by seven weeks, which is when the trip is. But I can't play until eight weeks. So there's kind of, it's kind of like a big deal for me. Um, I might be able to go for a chorus because I always sing in women's choir, but I mean the rides and stuff, I will probably not be able to do it. Even like small rides, if this bumps into anything, it's gonna either mess it up or I'm gonna be hurting a lot. So that's the deal with me. Um, if anyone else plays an instrument, that might be the deal for you guys. But I was told otherwise and now he kind of was like, you know, you need to like lay off it. And that's about it. I'll give you an update for the first four days and then I'll show you a few days after and then after my post-op and then once I start PT and I'll be updating um, by then.